What's up, guys? Uh, if you've used OBS before, you probably know it's a very powerful and useful tool for recording and live streaming. But every once in a while, you might find there's something that you want to do with it and you just don't have the feature that you need to accomplish that. That's where plugins come in super handy. And with OBS being an open source platform, they really encourage it and even take some of these features and kind of incorporate them into new settings and features for OBS in future releases. Well, if you need it right now, maybe there's a plugin that's out there that you can download and install, but you need to know how to do that. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. We're gonna show you how to install custom plugins into OBS. It's not that hard. You just need to know the path of where to put them. And yeah, it's pretty easy, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys that in this video. But if you want to see a future video of us maybe covering like our top five favorite OBS plugins, let us know in the comment section down below. And before we run that intro, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, maybe think about doing it. We've got, I think, over 95 or 96 or 7% of our viewers aren't subscribed to this channel. And if you guys could subscribe, that would help us out a ton. So if you enjoyed the video and you think it's worth it, maybe go ahead and give us a subscription so you can check out some of our future videos that we release here sometime soon. So without further ado, let's roll that intro. What's going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to install plugins for OBS, it's very simple. So let's go ahead and just jump over to the computer so I can show you how to do it. All right, so now we're over at the computer and I'm gonna show you how to manually install OBS plugins. It's not hard at all. And I'm also gonna show you where you can find a bunch of OBS plugins and kind of you know dig around and see if you can find something that might be useful for you. Now, I wanna go ahead and say that a lot of these plugins are a lot more self-aware and can actually install themselves with an installer. And the one that we're gonna take a look at here in a second actually has an automatic installer, but I'm gonna show you how to install it manually just in the instance that you may run around and find one that has to be installed manually because that might be exactly why you're watching this video. So the best way I found to find OBS plugins is to simply go to Google and just search OBS plugins. And then it should take you directly to the OBS plugins kind of repository of uh, user uploads and stuff on OBS's website. And there are tons of these. You could spend hours going through these and finding really good plugins. And the cool thing about OBS is some of these plugins that could be literally from 2017 can still be useful and work properly in the current version of OBS here in 2022, which is psh, mind blowing and insane. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this note scenes note doc, because I think this is a really cool one if you live stream and you wanna be able to take your notes directly inside of OBS. So you can go back and find clips or whatever else you might wanna do, or just you know add some notes about what went on in your stream. Um, so this is a really cool plugin and we have the option up here to download and a lot of these will actually take you to a GitHub repository. If it takes you to a GitHub repository, nine times out of 10, you're going to be able to find the download here on this code tab and scroll down through here and find that. It's right here. And then sometimes they have this wiki tab and a lot of them will redirect back to the code tab because that information is already there. But if they do have a separate wiki tab set up, it may give you specific instructions on how to set up that particular plugin. In our case, it's going to actually bounce us back, I believe, to the web page we were on. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. And we're already here. So what we need to do now is go ahead and click on download and we get a few options. If you want easy mode, which I would assume most of you probably do whenever you go to install these, just go with the installer. If your version of you know OBS that you're using, typically on Windows, they're gonna have an installer for them. I don't know exactly how that's gonna translate to Mac and Linux, but for Windows, it is super easy. You just download the installer and unzip it and run it and you're good to go. We're gonna download just the zip files and we're gonna manually install it because it's not that difficult and I wanna show you how easy it is to do so. So after your files have downloaded, I've just went ahead and copied mine to my desktop, but you're probably going to find these in what's called a zip file. This just means that the files are compressed together and before you can start copying your files to where you need them to go, you're actually gonna to have to go ahead and right click on this and then click extract. Depending on your version of Windows, it might be in a slightly different location in that drop down menu when you right click, but 
that's how you're going to do it. You're going to look for the words extract. So I'm actually going to take this window and I'm going to move it over here to the side of my monitor. It's going to snap and just put it over here. And the reason why is because we're going to be copying files um, from that folder on my desktop to a directory where the plugins folder is for OBS on my hard drive. And we want to be able to make sure that those go to the right places and that we can copy those easily. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring up another window right here. So I actually have this other window open. I'm going to close it. But if you're in the same situation and you need to go ahead and copy that, you can also just press like control in, or you can go down to file explorer and just open up a new version of file explorer or another instance. And I'm going to snap that over here to the left side. So before we go any further, I want to mention this now, go ahead and close OBS. You don't want this open while you're copying plugins and sometimes configuration files. You don't want to mess up something if you can avoid it. So just go ahead and close it and we'll open it up after we're done copying all of our files. The path that you're going to be looking for is maybe a little bit different depending on what version. Um, the plugin requires or maybe what version of OBS you're running. Um, but simply go to your location, uh, your local disk of C drive. That right there is going to be where you want to start. So you'll know you're in the right place if you see stuff like program files in program files x86. So I'm going to open up program files x86 and all I'm looking for is OBS and I do not see OBS or open broadcaster software here. So I'm going to go back to my local disk and then I'm going to go to program files and we see OBS dash studio. So that's where we want to go now. So now that we're here, we can actually see that there is an OBS plugins folder and a data folder. And we can see that over here on the right hand side in the files that we extracted or unzipped a second ago, um, we have two of those folders as well. So simply what we're going to do is just open up these folders and we're going to copy this stuff in here. It's that easy. So for example, I'm going to open up my data folder and after I open that up, I can see there's another OBS plugins folder. So I'll go down through there and I'll go down through here and we can see that this is the last one of where we don't have any duplicates. So we can simply just copy the scenes notes doc and copy it right over here. You may have to give it admin privileges. If so, um, just go ahead and click continue. And if your computer is password protected and requires that because you don't have administrator of privileges, you'll have to enter that there. Now we're going to go back since we're done with this OBS plugins folder. And we're going to go back and we see that we need to go to the main OBS plugins folder. So we'll go back to that one and we can see that it's right here and we'll open it up and we can see that we've got two folders under this one. We've got a 32 bit and we also have a 64 bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the 32 bit folder and I'm going to copy these files over or move them. Doesn't really matter if you feel like copying them, feel free to do that. And then I'm going to go back to the 64 bit folder and I'm going to copy these files over as well and click continue. And it's that easy to manually install plugins for OBS. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch OBS and let's see, it helps if I click the right thing and we're going to see if that plugin is now showing up. All right, so now we're in OBS and this is my first time actually using this plugin, but it's supposed to be a doc. So I believe I know exactly where to go to find this. There is a good possibility if you've never used a plugin before and you can't find it in OBS that it might be somewhere a little obscure where you have to do some, you know, tweaking inside of OBS to get it to the location that you might see in some of the footage that you might find in a YouTube video or screenshots that you might find when searching for the plugin. So I definitely suggest you check out the documentation on wherever you download this plugin from, whether that's directly on OBS's site or if it's on a GitHub repository. So be sure to read documentation and those wikis are actually very useful for those more complex versions of these plugins. So for me, all I got to do now is go to view docs and scene notes and I have the plugin already running inside of OBS. I can go ahead and type in my notes and consult the other documentation to figure out all the other cool stuff I can do. Like I believe I can right click on this and change the background color. So if I wanted to make the background color of my text purple, I could do so. And I could even change stuff like the text color specifically. 
and even the font and all that other cool stuff. It seems like this is a really cool plugin. And if you guys want to check it out, um, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, or if you want to see a breakdown of maybe like some five really cool plugins for OBS, let me know in the comment section down below. So all right, guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, get subscribed and turn on notifications. If you haven't already, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, over 95 or 97, whatever the number is, percent of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you stuck around this long and you think you enjoyed the content, then maybe go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can see some of our future videos on stuff like OBS, live streaming, content creation, and all that other kind of stuff let us know in the comment section down below was this video useful for you were you able to get it working and is there just some other cool videos that you'd like to see um, related to obs let us know also, if you want to be like these lovely people that are on screen right now and become a YouTube member for How To Tech, you can get early access to things like videos, discounts on merch, community only posts, emotes, badges, and much, much more. Big thanks to all of our members. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Tech helping you take your tech to the next level, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.